Hi everybody, I am home this afternoon. I decided to stay home. I came home at the lunch hour and had to clean up dog mess and that just threw me for a loop. So she stole the dinner off the kitchen counter two nights ago now, um, wolfed it down. Pardon the, par sorry, the, sorry for the pun. Pardon the pun. Wolfed the dinner right down and today, yeah, I cleaned up a mess. So let's talk about stress. Now, I'm, I'm relaxing now. The, took care of everything and just said, I'm not going back to the office. Don't feel like it. I had to change my clothes and put a load of laundry down. Let's talk about stress. You know, I like to say there are three kinds of stress, mechanical stress, chemical stress, mental stress, and they all impact the body the same way, creating that inflammatory response, changing those functional levels, levels of your nervous system. And you know, there's four functional levels of the nervous system. And I go over that with you in Brain Sense Telehealth so you can evaluate where you are and come up with ways to make your nervous system work better for you because every exposure teaches your nervous system in a positive way and or a negative way. It just depends how, how that goes and we discuss that. Mental stress, emotional, mental, sorry, mental stress, mechanical stress, and chemical stress. I'm gonna give them some new nicknames or maybe recategorize them. Here they are. There's the scapegoat stress, the bad bargaining stress, and the no press stress. Why would I go and do that? Well, to help us think a little bit more about how we want to dive in because some stresses we totally ignore. We don't understand them. We just pretend they don't exist. We're like, well, it's not a big deal right now. And that's the whole point with me trying to teach people how to protect their brains. Your brain makes the body so you can make your life and you can give yourself amazing life experiences. You've already got the tools, but sometimes you need to learn how to use those tools more proficiently. And that's why I'm here to help you with that and walk on the journey with you. So scapegoat stress. I, I call it that because this is the stress we easily blame. It um, gives you an easy out maybe, um, you know, not to offend anybody, but it's excuses. Here's what the scapegoat stress entails. When somebody says to me, I slept wrong. Okay, yeah. You woke up feeling really crampy. You gotta figure out what you did the day before or the week before because it didn't just happen. I'm talking about evaluating the long-term stresses because they're more insidious, they sneak up on you, you ignore them, and they're the ones that cause the major damage to your body and give you chronic health problems. The scapegoat stress, that's the easy way out. When you come to me and say, I overdid it in the garden. I lifted too much. I was standing too much. I was walking too much. Um, I injured myself lifting weights the other day. Now, yes, you do injure yourself and how you heal is based upon your current state of health at the time of that injury. So I don't discount that. But most of the time when somebody comes to me with an injury, there's more underlying problems. And I wanna to go to the underlying problems because they will give you much more relief. They will, learning about the situation and freeing yourself from it gives you just a big sense of accomplishment. It's meaningful, it's very re rewarding. So when someone says I slept wrong, that means you don't wanna delve very deeply into your whole health picture. When somebody says, yeah, I got a trigger point here, it tells me you aren't interested in wondering what else is going on in your life that needs your attention. Our bodies talk to us, they ask for help, and they want tender, loving care. So if you've got the scapegoat stress now, I want you to point yourself into the direction of the next two categories of stress. So let's talk about the bad bargaining stress. 
And I call it that because we all make a deal, a deal with the devil, and we accept things in our lives because we just don't have time to make changes, we just don't have time for it, period, and we've got our priorities set, and they are not always healthy priorities. So the bad bargaining, there's a little bit of codependency going on in there. Um, so some examples would be an unsupportive relationship, whether it's at home, in another part of your family, at your job, or some type of volunteer group you deal with. If you are in bad relationships, your health is gonna be crap. No other way to put that. So the bad bargaining is um, deciding you're gonna deal with something or maybe not deal with something. Maybe kinda um, put it under the rug, leave it alone, tolerate it. So that's the first one that comes to my mind when you have unsupportive relationships. If you have job demands, job stress, you're unappreciated at your job, emotional stressors that build up over time and change those four functional levels of the nervous system, they can be quite damaging. I use chiropractic to help you retrain your brain with, along with nutrition, along with other brain training techniques. And that's why I call it the three doorways of moving your brain, feeding your brain, and talking to your brain. What are some other bad bargaining stresses? Um, I already mentioned relationships, uh, the job, your jobs are number one. I hear it every day. You are dealing with the stress of your job. It's usually <laughs> coworkers who just drive you crazy and, or, or just a job situation that doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you feel stuck because you've got to have the paycheck. You don't know how to spread your wings and branch out and do something new for yourself. These are the bad bargaining stresses. Um, relationships, um, what else? Peer pressure. Um, I had a whole list of them in the office. I can't think of them at the top, off the top of my head, but most of it is emotional stress, but also peer pressure dealing with diet. People just eat the wrong foods because they're with other people who want to eat the wrong foods. There's a lot of pressure to eat a certain way, so that's a bad bargaining stress. Um, not getting enough exercise. You know, when I was younger, people would laugh at me. Certain people would laugh at me for jogging. I love to run and jog, and I would, if I had a, um, an errand to run, if I had to go to the post office, I'd take my mail with me, put on my sneakers, off I go jogging. I would go to the grocery store if, it was, if all I needed to do was carry a small bag. I just love to add that fitness aspect into a lot of things that I did. I got laughed at for that. So I didn't want a bad bargain. I just ignored them. I said, ah, too bad for them. I'm gonna do it because I like it. And it's my favorite way to stay fit. So bad bargaining has a lot to deal with peer pressure and how you make decisions around other people. And sometimes that means um, when you wanna make a smart health decision, you are going to ruffle the feathers of other people around you. And that's tough. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you don't do it alone. I'm walking that journey with you. So share that with me and you're at your chiropractic visit, at your brain sense telehealth session, just let's talk about it and figure out how to make the most, make the best out of um, just an unfortunate situation. So these are the examples of bad bargaining stress. And I think most everything falls into that category, the bad bargaining, because we're human and we have our addictions, whether it's a addiction to shopping, addiction to food, addiction to eating out, um, addiction to the coffee, the little coffee shops you can drive by and grab something really quick at the drive-thru. Those are our most challenging ones. And the third one, the no press stress, is um, just a little bit more challenging as well. And no press, meaning it's not in your everyday media information about this kind of stress 
is either hidden or it's not emphasized. It's just nobody cares. And I'm talking about mold illness, heavy metal exposure, glyphosate, that famous Roundup, and it's pervasive. These types of toxins are in our air, our water, our food, our soil, not to mention the toxins in our homes, um, like, uh, let's see, what's in the woodwork, what's in your appliances, what's in your furniture, not to mention also electromagnetic frequency, that type of pollution. These things don't get heavy play in the media. Your doctors aren't going to talk about it. And you have to look really hard if you want to teach yourself about these aspects. And the other one is medications because they are also toxic. They damage mitochondria. And that's the double-edged sword of wanting to take a medication to help yourself deal with a symptom. So I'm going after all of it. Any possible toxin, um, it, whether it's in the air, it's in the ground, and the glyphosate, that's a biggie because it changes your liver, it changes your digestive tract, it affects your brain, and we don't know how much is too much, and we are learning as we go. These scientists are not that interested in talking about it, but we've got a lot of Alzheimer's disease, we've got a lot of autism, and we have a lot of people struggling with thyroid disorders, anemia that doesn't seem to get better. So the glyphosate is a new pet project of mine, and I implore you to include the importance of detoxification when you feed your brain. Also moving your brain helps you detoxify. Move your brain, feed your brain, and talk to your brain. These are the three ways we do it. So where does your stress fall? The scapegoat stress gives you an easy out. The bad bargaining stress, which is the codependency, the real struggles because changing is hard, it upsets other people around you. You upset the apple cart when you try to do things better for your health. And then the third one would be the no press stress, meaning journalists, media, nobody wants to talk about it. In fact, some of it gets censored or blocked from YouTube and from blogs, from newspapers. Uh, you know the pharmaceutical companies own the major uh, TV news outlets. That's a problem because if you as a reporter want to talk about something important for health and the pharmaceutical companies don't like it, you're not going to be allowed to say that on their channel anyway. There's other avenues. You've got to seek it out. So with the no press stress, these are the stresses nobody pays attention to, but it's wreaking havoc, and I want you to be aware. Educate yourself. And we do that with Brain Sense Telehealth. I'm glad you're here. It's time to end the video. I want you to have a great day. Check out the blog for my other um, postings, whether it's just uh, articles I've written or more videos. Check out the infomercials for my Brain Sense Telehealth. Look at the BFA protocol that I talk about, brain first always, because like I said, the brain sets the stage for what the rest of your body is going to do. We cannot ignore that. The nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, elite. We love it and we thank it. We thank our nervous system and give it TLC because it works so hard for us 24 hours a day. It just wants a little attention, a little recognition. So get your chiropractic care and get your brain sense telehealth sessions and talk about other nutritional avenues you can take in order to help yourself. I'm glad you're here. Please share this video with somebody who is a scapegoat stressor or a bad bargaining stressor or a no press stress stressor. Thanks for watching.